Hey, what's going on everybody? I hope you're having a great weekend. I know I am. Um, I just wanted to jump on here real quick. I have more BSPWM videos coming out, but uh, today I just wanted to show you something I've been working on. Um, just show you real quick, and let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, if we look and launch a terminal on a lot of machines, um, people like to use a little bit of decoration, and usually they're going to use something like NeoFetch or PFetch. Um, there's plenty of other stuff out there. There's FetchMaster 5000, I think it's called, and there's a few other things that don't necessarily give you system information, but just kind of pretty up your terminal. Um, I have a video created about how I do a moving GIF in my terminals or GIF, however you pronounce it. Um, so there's that as well. Um, so just all kinds of other different things going on. But I just kind of want to show you what I'm using now. And it's not a, an external program. It's not something I installed on my system. If we go here to my first workspace, you can see that it is my own personal uh, created. Um, excuse me, uh, my own personal created um, information. Uh, program I guess you'd call it uh, just gives me my distribution my init system my shell and how many packages I have on my system um, it's real simple it's extremely extensible you can go ahead and put whatever you want into it because all it is is if we vim into my dot local scripts and the script I've called it is sysinfo.sh and we look here it's just a script with a bunch of functions in it um, I've got a function on the top here that is going to run the awk f command on my etc slash os release it's going to look for the pretty name field and it's going to print the second or pretty name row it's going to print the second field in that which is my distro name which is void so that's the first function um, it's going to look for my init system it's going to look for a process id for systemd if it doesn't if it sees a id for systemd it's going to print f systemd Otherwise, it's going to search for a file called sbin slash openrc. If it sees that, it's going to print f openrc. Otherwise, it's going to run cut on my proc slash one slash com file. And what I have in there, obviously, is um, my init system, which is run it. And it'll print that out. Um, so that's another function. My package count, it's going to check the package managers. Um, if it's, uh, scroll down here, if it's xbps, then it's going to run xpps-query and run a uh, list all the packages installed and it's going to pipe it into word count and then count the lines with the l flag if it's apt it's going to run apt list dash and dash installed and it's going to pump that to dev null and then it's going to pipe that into word count and run a line count on it and then pacman it's going to run pacman q and it's going to run pipe that into word count and run a line count on that and then that will just print out how many packages basically how many lines that shows which is then in turn how many packages are on your machine um, if it's not one of those, if you're using like Zipper or DNF or Yum or whatever, it's going to show not found. You'll have to add that option in here on your own if you want to use the script. Um, if you scroll down, it does have an update section. I took that off because, well, I've got my updates right here, but it is still in the script, but it will list your updates. Um, so it'll run through and obviously check for XPPS install. And I, I started writing this and I realized I really don't need it. Um, so the apt one is incorrect. It's just going to list all the packages, um, and the Pac-Man is just going to say nope. So if you want to use this, if you have a Debian or a Pac or Arch-based system, you can change those to run um, whatever it is you run to check how many updates you need. Um, and then it's going to run my shell version. I'm on ZSH, so I just put ZSH dash dash version, and I piped it into awk, and then I printed field 1 and field 2, which is ZSH.5.8. And so then I have down here, I have this little section that is going to print F, and it's going to print distro right here. So if we open another terminal here, and let's clear the screen, and actually, no, we don't need to clear the screen. Let's open another terminal, and let's zoom in. Um, you can see right here that I have everything separated into brackets. I've got distro, which printf is going to print distro, which is right here. And then it's going to run my distro function which that function prints out void, which is my operating system. It'll print out whatever operating system you're using. And it'll put that there. And then I have a, a semicolon and it's gonna do distro, or it's gonna do printf and it's gonna do some brackets and it's gonna go through and just run whatever functions I put in this area. So that being said, you can see over here, it does that my distro, my init system is run it, my shell is ZSH stop, or is DSH 5.8 and I have 933 packages. So let's go ahead and close that back out and let's go over this bottom portion of the script. And you see it just runs in parentheses, it runs printf, and it does that distro with the bracket, and then it's going to run that distro function, and then it's going to printf the closing bracket, and then the opening bracket, and then it's going to printf init system, and then the dash, and it's got a, a semicolon, and it's going to print 
the find init function. It's going to run that function, and then it's going to print up the open or the closing and opening bracket, and then it's going to print a shell, looking for what shell I'm using. And um, once it finds the shell, it's going to a little too far on that one. Once it finds the shell, it's going to print the func shell function. It's going to print that out, and it's going to print up op or closing and opening bracket again, and packages and package count. And if you want to do the updates, you just add this basic section right here onto the end of this or wherever you wanted to in it and add the list updates function as well and then if you wanted any other functionality you know you just create a function for it and call it down here in this bottom line now what happens is I have that piped into TR and it um, <clears throat> looks for a new line and replaces that new line with a space because if you don't do this basically it lists everything out in column form so it'll be listed all in order in a column this line right here, this pipe TR, looks for the new, the carriage return or the new line, and then it puts the space, is gonna put everything right next to each other, so that way, um, when we open up a terminal here, um, you can see right here, everything is listed out this way instead of listed out on top of each other. Um, so we do that, and then what I have it done is I have it, uh, the output of this pushed over into a dot, lo dot local share sysinfo.txt. So I have a path to a certain file here, which is dot local share sysinfo.txt. And the reason I do this is because if you put the update function in here, it takes about seven to 10 seconds for it to count all the updates. So when you launch a terminal, you're looking at, with my moving GIF in there too, you're looking at anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds before I am able to use my terminal once I hit launch. And that's a bit excessive for me. So basically what I have it do is I have it pump it into this sysinfo.txt. And uh, so it runs this all these long, this long string of commands and then pumps that into the sysinfo.txt. And then what we do there is let's write and quit and let's go into my zshrc, which I have it aliased to zconf. Um, and if we scroll down here, you can see I run this uh, case statement here. So this function only runs in my kitty terminal because this is the only one I have my moving GIF in. So it's gonna run the logo command, which is a script I've covered before. Um, and if the terminal that I launch is kitty, then it's going to run kitty plus kitten icat and that's going to give me my moving gif and then right below that it's going to print f and it's going to have a little decoration and it's going to print the xdg session dex desktop so no matter what i'm in if we um, actually go over here and you can see right here it says let's zoom in you can see it says herbs luft sysinfo well if we go right here if I was in BSPWM, it would say BSPWM sysinfo. If I was in DWM, it would say DWM sysinfo, xmonad sysinfo. Whatever XDG session I am in, whatever window manager I'm using, will print out here and it'll say sysinfo. Then what I have that do is I pipe that into TR because, um, let's just do this the efficient way. <laughs> I get comments all the time that I'm using my HJK and L keys too much and not using them as efficiently as it could be used. And that's true, but hey, you know what? My system, my videos, my deal, sorry. <laughs> um, so anyway, I pipe that line into TR, which then looks for any lowercase letters or characters and it change them, changes them to uppercase because if you run XDG session desktop, if you run echo this command here in your terminal, it's gonna print out herbs loaf or whatever you're using but it's going to be lowercase and I want it uppercase so all that does on the end is changes any lowercase letters to uppercase letters then what I do below that is I cat out that file I created um, at the end of my script I cat that out and then these two here are carriage returns so it gives me two new lines and then I print up the bottom decoration for it and that's it and once that's done um, basically I get a nice random moving gif in my terminal here and then I get my system information I want underneath it and again it's extensible I can put whatever function I want to list whatever I want in it and that goes underneath it and this way I don't have to have any extra programs installed on my system I do have NeoFetch and PFetch installed just because I have those on before I created the script but I don't need to install any extra systems or any extra programs to run this and actually have the same information that I'm getting in NeoFetch and PFetch <laughs> and then some I can have more information I can have it just echo out some uh, random text I can have whatever I want put in this if I just create a function for it and then call it in the bottom of that script so it's really cool it's really useful and I really hope that you guys like it and can maybe get some use out of it so that being said I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend have a great day God bless